Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new quilting tip video. Today I want to teach you how to build something that I think is absolutely essential for your sewing and quilting hobby. It's a firm pressing board. Super, super simple to build, not very expensive at all. And this can make such a dramatic difference when it comes to preparing your fabric for quilting and sewing. There's a couple things about it that are really unique. Number one, it's firm. It's not like an ironing board, which is really squishy and allows your fabric to shift all over the place. Ironing boards will distort your fabric, whereas a pressing board will allow you to press against it firmly and that's going to keep your fabric nice and straight of grain. So it's gonna make a big difference there. The cotton canvas that we'll cover our boards with also gently grips your fabric so it stays in place. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna be chasing it around the board as you press. That makes a big difference for things like applique when you're fusing things together. So I think this is essential. In fact, actually, this is one of my favorite quilting tools of all time. And I have multiple boards all over the house and out here in the crafty cottage. So I think it's really a key thing to have and to build yourself. So let's get started building firm pressing boards together. So let's get started making our firm pressing board. What you're gonna need first is your board, and I am using three quarter inch plywood here, and I've just cut it into a square shape. This is the size and shape that I'm needing uh, in my upstairs office right now, and this is 14 inches square, but I have these built in lots of different sizes and shapes. The size that I normally use out here in the crafty cottage is quite a bit bigger. I think it's something closer to 24 by, um, 36 so it's a lot bigger and covers up a lot more space so that way I can shoot videos with it easier It's nice to have little boards so you can keep them tucked next to your sewing machine too So really play around with that and play with a lot of different sizes and shapes If you have trouble getting a piece of small plywood the size and shape you need Go to your local hardware store and ask them to cut it for you Most of the time if you start with a smaller sheet, they will be able to cut it for you in the store Okay, let's talk about the batting and the canvas. I'm using, uh, this is 100% cotton batting and it's a very thin loft and that's really important. We don't want a thick, squishy batting. That's the whole point of making a firm pressing board so it's firm. So this is Quilter's Dream Cotton and I'm using it in the select thickness and I think that's gonna work out great. Uh, it's you know thick enough that it's going to give us a little bit of cushion, but not so thick it's gonna cause any kind of squishiness. Uh, and I'm also back here using a piece of 100% cotton canvas and you want it to feel kind of slightly rough. Uh, I played around with jean material too and that really didn't work, it was just too soft. You want a very thick, uh, very um, sturdy 100% cotton canvas. Okay. To put it together, you're gonna need a heavy duty stapler like this, and I am using 3 8 inch uh, T50 staples, and you're gonna need a hammer <laughs> because they don't always wanna go in all the way. Okay, so let's get started. Now, normally if I was doing a rectangular board, I would start with the long edges first, but because we're working with the square, it really doesn't matter what side you start with. So I'm just gonna start with the side, and I'm gonna pull the batting up around to the surface, and I'm gonna run a line of staples all along this edge. So that's a line of five staples installed right along that edge. It's nice and smooth and tight, but they didn't go in all the way here, so I'm gonna grab my hammer and bang them in a little bit uh, lower so that way they're flush with the surface of the uh, batting. So there we go, that is nice and secured. Now this is the one time I like to pick up the board, take the batting and really smooth and uh, almost pull it over to the opposite side. I want it to be as flat and smooth to that edge as possible. And so now I'm gonna start curling it up around this opposite edge. Now smoothing up the board and over and around that edge. And this is why I usually do this on the longer side of the board first, so that way I'm sure that batting 
is as tight as it possibly can be. Okay, now that looks good. I'm gonna run that line of staples just exactly the same way I did before. Don't worry about it if some of the staples go a little wonky on you, it's okay. This is just the first step of securing this. We're gonna also secure it again whenever we put the cotton canvas in place. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it around so that way it's facing me and easy to work on. And we're gonna work on these corners because we don't want this to get too bulky, but we do want these corners to be softened just a bit because, you know, it's wood and it's a little sharp and the last thing you want is to, you know, kind of have that hanging up on you all the time. So the solution that I found here is to go in ahead and do your fold. And what you do is squish the corner down and then fold it over like a present. Well, we have a little bit of, you know, just excess fabric here, but once you crease it over there, you can kind of see it. So what I do is take a pair of scissors and I trim a half of an inch inside of those crease lines. So I take away a piece about that big. So now I can fold over and I've got enough batting here to fold all the way over the edge of the board. And then you can see I'm making that nice, comes to kind of a half inch fold over here and then I can slide it over and there's a lot less bulk. There's a lot less material here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, fold it over, kind of give it a little crease, open it back up again, and now trim away what I don't need. There we go. It's just a little bit of extra fabric. I mean, if you wanted to leave it, you could leave it, but I just think this makes it a little bit neater and a little bit less bulky. Okay, so there we go. Now we folded those sides in like a present and now we'll fold it up to the surface. And I like to start in the middle with stapling and staple all the way out to these folded edges. So there's three sides all ready to go. I'll do one more smooth out of that batting on the surface as I bring it around for the other side. You can always just hold it upright like this and smooth it out. You might be wondering why I don't use any kind of spray basting glue or anything like that. I really don't like using chemicals like that and I have found that they end up darkening the surface. They darken the canvas prematurely so I, I don't personally like doing that. I just like to just pull the batting around by myself. Okay, so I'm folding that corner. I'm just gonna go on ahead and fold these corners in and staple it down just the exact same way as the other side. So the first step is complete. We've got our batting in place and look how nice and smooth and flat that looks on the right side. That's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be perfect for pressing. Okay, so now I'm gonna center this up onto my canvas and I, I think I forgot to tell you how big to cut your canvas. You wanna cut your batting two inches bigger than your board. You wanna cut your canvas four inches bigger than your board and that's more than enough room to turn these edges nicely. Okay, so we started on these edges and then finished with these edges. So now we're going to start here and what we'll end up with is because we have extra bulk right here, we'll end up with the canvas bulk right here and it'll kind of balance each other out. <laughs> and if you don't remember that, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Uh, that's the nice thing about building your own pressing boards is it's very forgiving. Uh, and the other thing is keep in mind, you're gonna have to rebuild this occasionally with new covers because pressing is kind of messy business and your boards will get discolored over time. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up and staple it in place. So now I'm spreading and smoothing that out. And what I mean by rebuilding these boards is I mean that you will occasionally have to uh, just simply replace the covers. Most of the boards that we use on a daily basis, they get recovered about every year to every six months. And here I can show you why. 
Uh, if you accidentally forget and leave your iron <laughs> on top of it, uh, it'll of course make a scorch mark. And uh, I just built this one today, you know, and already managed to scorch it. So that just lets you know how easy it is. Uh, and I mean, of course that doesn't um, stop the board from working or doing its job. It's just one of those things that it's kind of nice to start fresh and have a new board nice and clean uh, about once a year or so. Okay, so this looks good. I pulled this nice and tight, just smoothing my hand up and over that edge. And I'll set it back down here and secure this side the same way. Now your canvas may start to fray just a bit. I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's just one of those things that kind of happens. If you wanted to before you got started, you could run a zigzag stitch around the whole thing. Um, it's up to you. Like I said, this is something I replace often, so I don't spend a lot of time making it perfect. Okay, so now these corners, we're gonna handle these the exact same way. I'm gonna press firmly down here, tucking that fabric down and over, and then doing that triangle fold to the side, just like a Christmas present. And just give it a good crease with your fingers and that will crease the fabric. So now I have that shape and then now I'm gonna cut out about a half of an inch around, leaving, I'm, what I'm doing is cutting out the shape, leaving a half of an inch on the canvas so I still have that to fold over and create that nice fold. Now you might wanna do a staple here. It can help you get a nice firm crease. It's up to you if you wanna do that, it's a little tricky. I hold my staple gun just like this, press really firmly and hit it. And that one went in real nice. There we go. Now fold this side the same way. And cut it back. And give it a fold in. There we go. And putting a staple here on this side, it just helps to pull this piece down and keep the corner nice and tight. So hold on to it firmly. And I'm left handed, so this is going to be an awkward one. Actually, I know I just can't manage that. So I'm gonna switch hands here. There we go, nice. Okay, now I'll just run a line of staples right along this edge to hold that in place. So I went on ahead and folded these corners in and stapled them down so they're ready to go. And then now I'm just going to hold the board upright and just like with the batting, I'm pressing my hand up, encouraging any extra fabric to move up and around that board and really pulling firmly on that cotton canvas to bring it around to the back side. There we go, that looks good. And then now all I've got to do is staple this side down too. So that's our pressing board done. Uh, take a second to go around to all your staples and make sure that they're firmly pounded in. Uh, if you want to, you could cover the back of your board with uh, something like this. This is some polyester uh, felt. It's just some really cheap craft felt. You could cut it down nicely and hot glue it to the back of your board. And then that would ensure that none of these staples scrape up your tables if that's a consideration or a concern for you. Usually, I'll be honest, I usually leave the back of my board looking kind of rough. As long as the staples don't scratch up my tables, I don't really care because the only side I worry about is the right side. So that's it for learning how to create a pressing board. I hope that you'll try this out and make it in all different sizes and shapes. Uh, you know, it's just really convenient to have these small boards next to your sewing machine. Uh, I have a really long board that's about 
you know, 40, 44 inches wide so that way I can press my yardage really easily. So run with this, make as many pressing boards as you need for your space. Um, keep them manageable in size so that they don't get too heavy, but enjoy doing this because it's gonna make such a big difference for pressing and preparing your fabric for quilting. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed learning how to build this firm pressing board with me today. I really enjoy teaching this because I think it's such an essential tool for quilting and sewing. Pretty much anything that you're going to press, it can be pressed against a firm pressing board and that's really gonna make a big difference. As I said, I don't finish the back. I don't feel like the back needs to be pretty in any way. Um, if you went with a really, really big board, like you made something the size of a table, I would just probably just cover the tabletop. Just cover the tabletop with a big board and then cover that with the batting and the canvas rather than having to attach legs to it or something like that. There's a limit to how big you can make these and they still be portable. Personally, for me, I stick with boards and then usually just pick them up and slide them onto the table whenever I'm needing them. And that works the best for my sewing studio and setup, at least right now. But here's the cool thing. These are so cheap and easy to build. You can make as many of them as you need. Anytime that things change and you need to create a new board, it's not a big deal to go and cut and staple one together, as you can see. So I hope that you enjoyed creating this with me today and I really hope that you will go and give this a try. I promise if you build a pressing board and start pressing your fabric on something like this, it will make a dramatic difference for your quilting ability, for the precision of your quilts and your blocks. It'll make a huge difference. It's a game changer, it really is. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.